Okay, welcome back to the Success Money and Marriage Podcast. I'm Steve Siebold. And I'm Don Siebold. And today we're going to be talking about in this episode about negotiating massive success. Okay, now on the surface, you, you think it depends on where you are with your business and what your past is. But now, if you've never had massive success in business, then this probably you're probably thinking negotiating it. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. That's not a problem. Well, yes and no. It can be a problem, right? I mean, yes, it can. Because if you, especially with the first time it happens when you have a windfall or something just big happens, you get a big contract, some kind of massive thing, and money starts flowing in like you've never seen in your life. And it's, I was telling somebody the other day somewhere about that. I guess we were, we were in, uh, out in uh, California the other day. We were out in Santa or uh, San Jose. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple days ago, and I was talking to someone about this, and I said, you know, it's it's like, uh, you know, adding money, a ton of money to people have never had money before, like in business or whatever, any kind of situation, is like. Adding tequila with someone that's never had a drink before. Mm -hmm. Like you give them five, six shots. You ever seen someone drink tequila that doesn't drink? Have you ever seen that really seriously? No, I haven't. Yeah, I have. Like a couple 21st birthdays. Okay. You know, back in the day. Mm -hmm. And they, I don't drink at all. Oh, give them tequila. Yeah, exactly. Two drinks and they're like, they're chasing cars. Okay. It's insane. (laughs) So it's the same thing. It's just all of a sudden that flood, that alcohol floods their brain and they get stupid really fast. And of course, that's really like drinking or drugs of any kind. You get dumber, you know, by the, by the drink, uh, especially with alcohol. Alcohol, right, so same thing with with massive success. All of a sudden, it can flood your brain. All of a sudden, you just start becoming dumber because you're just so flush, you know, with with this new stimulus that's all of a sudden gives you all these options you never had before, right? And uh, so that that's kind of so. That's what we're going to talk about. Any any initial thoughts on this that you can uh, that you can add? No, I just think I, what I think I would want to ask you is even if you know it's coming, like when the money started first coming in. I remember the day I called you and said, and I I had been keeping up with the numbers and we had this big loan and I remember looking at our bank account and I said we have a million dollars in the bank we just or we just went over a million dollars right and um and and what an exciting the first time that was a, such an exciting time and, and then of course we lost it and called you again hey the next time we, we have a million hey, we're hey, over we have a zero million dollars now. now we have zero <laughs> in the bank you know. that wasn't as fun that, of a, that was not as fun of a conversation <laughs> tennis shoes. It's that gone. was not as fun of a but you know as, as an entrepreneur you know I always make a joke when I speak to women that are entrepreneurs and and you know and an audience is you have them raise their hand and and uh, you know, so I said, okay, those that raised your hand, you say you're an entrepreneur. I mean, how many times have you lost all of your money? And then keep your hand up and, you know, people take it down. I'm like, if you haven't at least lost all your money at least once, I don't really think you're an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so so I think, a big chunk of it anyway. I think, you know, the first, the, you know, they always say the first million is the hardest. I totally agree with that. Uh, but you got to check your head. You got to check your ego. And yeah. I think that once you lose it all, you get a little bit more humble. <laughs> and the next time you make it, you handle it a little bit better. Right. Um, but I think as the success is go on you really have to be careful and it's so hard to to keep it together when you first start making it it's so hard yeah. your emotions are so high you've worked so hard and you want to celebrate and it you know i've probably said things and done things that i wish i hadn't have done in our 20s when we first made our early 30s when we first made the first million um that i wish i hadn't have done i look back now um that i wouldn't have done i wouldn't do now yeah as a more mature person i remember one time driving down the road we had a friend that owned a bank right a mm-hmm. community bank yep and um and i remember i'll never forget i was driving down i-95 south towards uh towards um miami and going somewhere for something and business during the day and the owner of the bank a friend of ours calls us up and uh, he calls me up and I, i'm you know i'm on the phone and in the car and he says uh he says hey congratulations steve i want you to know something i was just going over the bank the books in the bank and uh, it was a small community bank and he was a friend of ours and he was a rotary club member and whatnot he had started banks his whole career that was his thing and very successful guy and he said you're congratulations i said what 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 for and we, i remember we were running like crazy we were doing corporate consulting contracts we were running like crazy and when you're like that you're just in, and we were so, always a small business so you know you're you're, you're working, doing everything yeah you're not like sitting up in an ivory tower watching every no. all the employees work you're the, you're the chief employee working twice as much as everybody else and so i was running somewhere to miami or fort lauderdale or something on 95 and he says you're our congratulations you're our youngest multimillionaire in the bank and i remember thinking Multi-millionaire? What are you talking? I mean, I'm like, what, Cal, what do you, what do you remember his name is yeah, Cal. Yeah. I said, Cal, what do you, I don't understand what you mean. He goes, you have $4 million in this bank. He goes, it, it, we, we never had such a young person with some. And I remember thinking, I have, really? Are you sure? Are you sure it's me? You sure you're going the right? Because, you know, you're working so much and you're working so hard. And, How and old you, were we when that, the, I don't know. That was know. the second 
The first one, yeah. That was okay. pretty young. Yeah. Pretty young. Yeah. But it, I don't remember. But I, I just remember that it just kind of blew my mind. I thought, you know, you're, you're running so fast and everything. And um, and I remember thinking, that that's unbelievable. I remember I had to call you and say, we have that kind of cash. I mean, how, where do we get up that much money? Because you're just running. And that was always your part, not my part. So I, I just, but I remember that the kind of the rush that kind of goes to, it's almost like alcohol yeah. or a drug of some kind where you're just all of a sudden, you're you're under the influence. Mm-hmm. And I, and it's great. And, and if you're sitting, I know probably people are listening to this going, oh, poor problem. Oh, yeah. my God. What right. a problem to have. Yeah, no, I get it. And it is a great problem to have, but it can be a problem. It can. Especially in a relationship, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I remember. I know you're leaning uh, up to something. You know where this is coming. I, you know I don't have any coming. idea, but I can tell from the look oh, on your face. you don't face, even have any idea. You're going to hit blindside me. Go ahead. Little Bo Peep does. No, I don't have any no, idea I don't where know you're going wh- I don't know which story you're going to come so, up with. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure there's several. This I just don't know which one. one. Okay. So I remember when we first started in the speaking. This is this is the sp- when I started going to professional speaking. And we lost all our money and decided to go into professional speaking because we just want to change gears completely. Build a different kind of a business. And you went into real estate. And I was getting killed before I met Bill Gove. Fifty thousand dollars the first year, as you mentioned on one of the shows we did uh, recently, and that in was debt, true. in debt, not making in debt, fifty thousand. Living with my lost. parents, yeah, literally in a ten by ten room. We were living in an oceanfront condo in four, seven, the penthouse on the on the seventeenth floor in Hollywood, Florida. Technically, mm-hmm. I mean, it was we had you know all this stuff, and it was great. And then we go up to a ten by ten room. I mean, talk about self esteem adjustment. Yeah. I mean, that was a, like like I felt like the biggest loser ever. And the truth is, we weren't. No. But it felt like it if I you know people say go back to your old self like what would you tell your 25 year old self I would say yeah really you got to be kidding me you know that was not none of that was our fault I mean we lost it anyway it's another story but it's just funny the way you look back and the way you you know in retrospect but anyway so Don started really killing it in real estate. Just, you know, that is like your skill set. But, you know, you can spin 22 plates at one time. I can spin one if I'm lucky, which is you just have that multitasking thing and you can get it all in, in a row. And it, and that's why you've been so successful running our companies. But I was getting killed in the speaking business. Bottom line, my, my self-esteem is in the tank to begin with. because I'm living with our, We're living with my parents in their 10 by 10 bedroom of their house. You know, so this is not good. So I'm feeling horrible about myself, my life. I have no self-esteem left, all these things. And then Don starts crushing it which really helped us out a lot but i remember that was the first time besides our business success right. which we never even had time to spend that money except for no. the apartment and stuff Mm-mm. we just were always working it was working 14 hours a day so it, we never really got the chance to no. inhale it mm-hmm. it just came and went like out the door mm-hmm. um you it started really going to your head i remember you, you, were, you know, you're normally pretty bossy anyway but you were like miss bossy pants after that and i was like damn this really was a kind of a mess. Look at your face. You, you remember what I'm talking about. You know I'm right. I, yeah. You know I'm right. So no, admit, I, admit I'm right. I, I will admit you're right. Can you talk about why you were so Miss Bossy Pants? I think it just felt so good to just have money coming in. I mean, first of all, I was waiting tables at night at Applebee's. And then, I mean, to set but the picture. at that up. point you No, were but I'm just before. setting, I'm, I'm just setting. The, okay, all right. Setting okay. the story up. <laughs> um, when we lost all the money, I started waiting tables again. So I waited tables in college and um, and started the real estate business in the first four months. Didn't sell anything in real estate. Ready to quit. Remember, you talked to me. Oh, yeah. Talked yeah. to me into staying. Um, and then I, the first year, made a hundred thousand dollars which was pretty unheard of in, back, then. back then you yeah, know um i was rookie of the year you know for um our area and um, it really it it i think it just felt so good to have money and I, I and this is another one of those patience things i had no idea what steve was doing and that it, yeah, that was I. one of the first time apparently <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. yeah but that was one of the first times we had worked separate uh, so we yeah. decided to split up i mean before we were you know always in business together from again from 19 and 20 we'd been in business yeah, together 2021 right. uh so we i we had to make money fast because we were living with his parents as he said as he said and so he went into this business we knew nothing about which and then i went into real estate which i knew nothing about and so when i started having success you had a mentor i had a great mentor yeah. i really did i had two, I had, I had two and and, uh, and, and Kath, Kathy, kathleen. kathleen um and so i i was very very lucky worked really really hard uh and so the money started coming in about six months in and so that first year i did really well and not knowing exactly what you were doing was irritating because yeah. he would go to work every day we would meet at like 10 o'clock at night when we were all done both done at the bowling and alley. i'm i'm producing an income for us and i'm like now what is it exactly that you do and so this is another one of those times where we work better together <laughs> Because yeah. I, I really was pretty frustrated because you were, I don't know what you did every day. And, and, I and you know, the speaking business is one of those things that you don't know exactly what it is because there's not that many, it's not even enough people in this industry to be an industry, I should say. But if Steve mm-hmm. has been, 
you know, if he was a, an attorney, I got it. I can get my, I can see that, you know, I can get my arms around that. Or if he said, I'm going to become a chiropractor, I know what that means. You know, a musician, I got that. Gigolo. But, you know, I'm just saying that that would be a, that would be something you'd know what I was doing. You know, I thought about it, thought about it, but yeah. I'm trying to get my arms wrapped around that. Hold on a second. <laughs> Stay through me for a second. We're trying to make money. <laughs> you being a jiggle, I'm not sure that was going to work out. Okay. Um, but, you know, being, being a professional speaker, like, what does that even look like? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. So, I got I got a little heady and a little probably less patient than I should have been. Little heady? Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. Your memory's fading, dear. Dear. Well, please share. You were, you were, you were pretty full of yourself. That might be too much. I mean, maybe not full of yourself. You were never full of yourself. But anyway, you just got a little. I'm kidding. I'm half kidding. But you, yeah, you just got mm-hmm. a little carried away. It's mm-hmm. it, you know when you have. That's what happens sometimes. I mean, it really oh, does. It's easy. It's easy too. It's like being a speaker. If you've never had recognition before, like I always did as a kid because I was an athlete and stuff. By the time I was six years old, there I was. You know, newspapers were writing articles and I was being quoted and all that kind of stuff. So I was used to it. But I've seen people like going to the speaking business and all of a sudden everyone's saying, "Oh my God, you're so oh, you're so wonderful. You're, right. you're I love your book. Oh my God!" And they're taking pictures with you know and. And all of a sudden, it goes right to their head. Right. It's like our old friend, our, our, he just passed away a few months ago, actually like a month ago, right. Doug Weed. Doug Weed. Used mm-hmm. to say, he said, you know, drink, uh, smell the perfume, but don't drink it. Yeah, okay. But it's easy to drink the perfume when you succeed at that. At some yes. level, where you consider massive, whatever that is. You know, okay, but in all fairness... You've had attention your whole life. Oh, you! Oh, so now you're so you're, on, you're on your heels I'm now. Defending, you're defending I'm your defending my pants. one time. One time. One time in our oh, lives. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, maybe went on for a little while, but one time one that time. I really got heady. You you've always had attention. I mean, you know, from your, to the time you were eight years old. So you humble. You were your parents were really good at humbling you. Um, being on yeah, a being the court. little kid of four brothers. Yeah, yeah, they beat me up is what they did. Well, I, I didn't have that. <laughs> so I get but, beat up every day. But you know, anybody that's an, <laughs> anybody that's listening that has been an athlete or has had that attention as an athlete. You know, I'm just the average girl from Doraville, Georgia. And now all of a sudden I'm making more money than I ever thought I was going to make or ever thought I could possibly make on my own. Is so remember before it had always been me and you. Yeah. And so, and, and Steve has always been the front man for our businesses. So, you know, you're the speaker, I run the business and people see you, they don't see me. And so now this was like, the, this was the very first time I had my own independent business. Everything was relying on me to get done. Sure. And so I had to have a Volvo. <laughs> I remember now. Yeah. I had to have a Volvo because I was a realtor and, and back then people got your car. I don't yeah. think they do that anymore, yeah. but you know, I would show up, they would get in the back seat and I had to have nice clothes and, and I, I probably went too far, but you know, if you've never had that attention and you've never had that recognition, I mean, I, I was, you know, really getting heady because I'd never had it before and you were really great at fixing it. Err. Yeah. Err. Yeah. You were hard to live with for a little while. I was. But, I was. Yeah, no, but, but I got yeah. it. I got it. You I got picked it, up. Yeah. I picked up, and your business picked up. And but seventeen and then, years later, you came around, which was yeah. which was good. Yeah, I fast. thought it was pretty fast, real fast. Real fast. <laughs> now, how long did that last? Really, I don't know. Maybe a, a year. Maybe maybe a year. Probably not that long. Right. Probably not that bad. Yeah. But it's but it's easy. You know, seriously, it's it is easy to do, especially you know if, if you've again never had that windfall before. And I, I would say you know here's a, and you I want to hear what your take is. My take after all these years and and you know obviously a number of windfalls and a number of setbacks at the same time. I mean, for sure. Um, and I think that humbles you as well. Absolutely. <laughs> so, oh, absolutely. As soon as you've had multiple windfalls and you go, oh yeah, what goes up okay. comes uh, down. And it will. <laughs> and it will. Eventually. It's not. <laughs> yeah, it's like markets. It's not it's if, like it's, else. if it's, it's not if, it's when. It's, it's not if, it's when. And so you know, you go, yeah, this is great. Let's bank every penny because a downfall will come eventually because right. that's the way it works in business. But in the beginning, you don't know that. You think, oh my God, everything, it's just going to kick. It's like when you get, you know, you get a, a good stock, you know, if you're new to the market, then you you invest in something and the thing goes up 20 points in a, in a month and you think, oh, I'm, my, genius. I'm a genius. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I'm just going, I'm like right. a savant yeah. of, of stocks. I mean, it's just, I just know how to value companies. I can time the market. I mean, I know, I know Warren Buffett says he can't time the market, but it turns out I can. Go figure. I must have a crystal ball. I'm a genius. And then you, you know, then you get humble like everybody else. But, um, but I, I think that you know, after all these years, besides the humbling, knowing of, of the failures that you've had, and that humbles you, of course. But I think beyond that, that what I would say to people is, and I've said this a lot of times on stage and in the media, is uh, money doesn't mean anything. <laughs> It does. Right. It. I know we in, in society, especially in America, you know, it's a money, celebrity, mm-hmm. attention based, crazed 
society, which if you've traveled around the world, you know, you know this, that we are an unusual country, some mm-hmm. very good ways and some lousy ways, I think. And this, this whole celebrity money thing is a little weird. We're, we're all around the world. They call us the same, even the Western world. They call us, call us in the United States, success obsessed. Mm-hmm. They call us that in Canada. Right. I mean, you don't have to go very far. And, but, uh, and we are, and, and I think we really are. And so we, we, we put people with money, rich people, famous people, celebrities, all, we put them on these pedestals. And the truth of it is after you, you know, you've been around for a while. Um, and if you have, you know this, but it doesn't have any meaning. You know, I, I know. So, you know, we know obviously a lot of really wealthy people because we've run in those circles for 38 years interviewing them and whatnot. And um, and we've been to all, you know, going to all the garden spots, Aspen, Palm Beach, Palm Springs, you know, San Jose last weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, we were Pebble, in Pebble Beach. Beach last yeah, weekend, you know, I mean, and I don't mean I mean, with clients, I mean, with people that we work with and um, and, you know, you realize that there is no meaning to this. It, it, there are people that are nice people that make money. There are people that are smart that make money. And there are people that aren't that smart that make money. Right. You know, I know mean, you could name a whole bunch of these influencers. Some of these people are complete morons, but you know, somehow they, they, they turn it into money and good for them. But it doesn't have any inherent meaning to it. it. It's a resource. So if you have a lot of it, God bless you. It means nothing. And if you have a little of it, it doesn't mean you're, you're dumb or you're not ambitious. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a piece of paper that represents you know, a trust in a, in a, in a currency. That's all it means. So, I mean, I think once you, 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 you detach your self-esteem from how much money you have or do not have, then when you get a windfall, you think, well, that's, Hey, that's great. I mean, that helps us. It makes life easier. It's going to make me happier, but it certainly makes life easier. We can pay these bills off. We can, you know, do some things maybe for charity if we, if we want to. Oh, easy to say, hard to do. Easy to say, hard to do. No question. Easy about it. But, but I think hard if you do. start, I think with you start with the idea mm-hmm. that it has no meaning. It is not about how smart you are, good you are. How, you know, it's just, it's just a medium of exchange and mm-hmm. I hope you get as much as you can, but don't think it makes you any better, smarter than anybody else because it's complete bs it I just agree. doesn't no i agree. you know yeah it's 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 hard to do it, easy to say you know and hard to do it is yeah. and I, I think the more successes you have or for those of you who are still struggling and haven't had that first success uh you know but you know it's coming you know you know you're doing the right thing and your your habits actions and behaviors are congruent with uh, the size and scope of your vision as you always say you see it coming uh, just be aware that you know it, be, be grateful and appreciative when it comes but also know you, you've got to stay with your head on straight. Yeah, we were just a couple days ago. We were out, uh, and uh, as Don said, uh, I think he said Pebble Beach, and uh, and we have a we have a business associate of ours who's uh, a little bit older than us and very 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 successful. One of the most successful people in the country, frankly. And he lives on Seventeen Mile Drive. They live on Seventeen Mile Drive, and we stayed over there, and we spent two days with them. And um, and of course, it's you know that's if you're a golfer, you know Seventeen Mile Drive, you know Pebble Beach, maybe the most famous course or one of the most famous golf courses. Oh, sure. in, certainly in America, if not the world. And um, and we were talking about business because we're in business with them. And um, and, you know, they were very humble. Very. They've been, you know, these, these are very wealthy people and they're very humble. And, you know, and what. OK, they live on 17 Mile and Pebble Beach. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't think we have to say that they're rich. Well, yeah, they're, like, they're rich, of course. But rich, I mean, rich. but my point is they handle it extremely well. Very humble. You know, they're very humble. They because they've been up and down as well. They started with nothing. nothing. Mm-hmm. Zero. Like most of us start with as entrepreneurs. I mean, mm-hmm. hey, if you if you were born with a trust fund, that's great. I wish I were, too. You know, that'd be great. But we weren't. We had nothing. And um, and if you have money and you're born with it or you inherit money, that's great. Then use it, you know, wisely. Don't be dumb. Uh, but most of us are not. Most of us start from scratch and we have nothing. And so I would say, remember where you came from. Yes. Remember where you came from. Remember what it took to get you to wherever you are in this exalted financial position. Um, and think about before you start talking too much about it and too weighty about it, you know, at cocktail parties with your friends are bragging. Well, that's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, be gentle. Remember where you came from. Remember that other people may, be not, may, may be there, they may not be there, and they may be suffering. They may be trying to pay their bills and they're stressed to the max, and you're talking about your new Ferrari, and they want to throw up. You know, and I don't blame them for that, as a matter of fact. You know, so uh, hand, handle it with humility. Which is I, kind of funny because our friend has a Ferrari, and he didn't tell us that he he never said never he had one. It. We never and saw it. So we were talking, we, had, we were having this conversation about how some people in our industry get really um, uh, full of themselves on stage and start telling everyone, I have a Lamborghini, and I have... And so we were joking, and he goes, well, and, and he said it so subtly, he goes, well, I actually have a Ferrari in the garage. And I mean, it was like my Pinto's, yeah. my Pinto's around the corner. I mean, he said it just like that. I was like, you know. It's funny. I don't know if you <laughs> noticed this, but she came out.
came out. We were going to dinner, and they were going to take us to dinner. And of course, we had a rental car there, and so it was a small car. And he and she and they were talking. The couple they were talking. This is just a couple of nights ago. And she said, she goes, uh, why, she said it to him. And we, Don and I were just mm-hmm. sitting in there in their one of the rooms. I don't know what it was called, mm-hmm. but one of the rooms. Uh, by the, uh, looking overlooking the ocean and the golf course is beautiful. And she said, uh, why don't we take the Bentley? And she got and she looked and she saw me and Don. And she said, I, I mean the convertible. Like, 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 yeah. I don't want to brag that it's a Bentley. Because you couldn't see it. It was in the garage. They had a bunch of cars, but it was in the garage. It was, and I remember she looked like, oh, I don't mean to say it's like it's a Bentley. Like, it's just a convertible. He goes, right. no, no, I'll say that. Let's just take the truck. We took the whatever truck. It was an amazing truck, by the way. Yeah, amazing truck, yeah. <laughs> it was like a super cool but truck. I mean, that, had all these bells and whistles. But let me just, I'm going to finish my part with saying, as, as rich as these guys were, and, and again, they're not that much older than, than Steve and I, um, if you can imagine, you know, huge mansions, several fancy cars, a very, very humble couple, so humble that the last night we were there we got so into talking about business that we all got hungry at the last minute and so oh, yeah, yeah. so instead of some fancy dinner which we did the first night was beautiful um, so instead of you know you know coming up or suggesting some fancy restaurant we ended up going through an in and out in and out burger. Or in and out burger. So, so if imagine if, if you can imagine the four of us are sitting in this actually gorgeous truck um, on the side of the McDonald's yeah. e- eating cheeseburgers and, and French fries and Diet Cokes yeah. uh, out of the car because we didn't want to stop talking, having our conversation. So that's pre- I thought that was pretty cool. And I and I uh, I, I paid the bill. <laughs> <laughs> for the whole in and out burger for all four of us. I'm still banking payments, but uh, but I hope to pay it off in the next three years. But I, I did. I, no thought, I thought that was really cool. And I'm, I'm going to remember that story to, to, you know, next time that I have the need to feel like I need to impress someone by taking them to a fancy restaurant. Um, not to do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess it's pretty yeah, cool. Just just remember that, you know, especially again, it, it, people listen. To, I know because, you know, I say this from stage and you've heard me say this and people go, oh, like, oh, like, oh, God, that's what a terrible problem to have. Yeah. But, you know, if you stay in business long enough, and you're smart and you have mentors and you work hard and you get a couple breaks along the way, you're This is going to happen to you. And again, it's like getting, getting a bunch of, you know, just doing shots of alcohol, doing shots of tequila or something really strong. And all of a sudden, you know, you're a normal, smart person. And, and 20 minutes later, you're the biggest idiot you've ever been in your life. And it's, and it happens to people and it happens to smart people. It really does. Absolutely. It's again, Doug weed, you know, smell the perfume, but don't drink it. It happens you know? mostly to smart people. Why'd you say it like that? Because yeah. it happened to me. Oh, oh, I see. I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened to you. Happened you to you. You actually, okay, I won't even start beating you up. I'll save it for another podcast. <laughs> 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 but but uh, you know I would say also think understand like like when you're investing what goes up comes down so you're yes you've had a windfall be grateful for it half the world is starving for food you know you're one of the luckiest people that ever walked the face of the earth uh, just to be you know in this country or in a free country wherever you're listening to this and that's that's a you know that's a, a democracy a free market uh, economy but um, but. Things go the other way too. So be humble because again, it has no meaning. You great, embrace it. Be very, be a good steward of the money. Live way below your means. That's one of the best piece of advice we ever got as entrepreneurs. Because when the when the when the music stops, okay, and there's no chairs left, you're gonna have to have cash to support you. And it happens at every business. If you stay in business long enough, what goes up comes down, and what goes down comes up. And it's a it's a cyclical process, and psychologically, emotionally, uh, you have to be ready to handle it. Otherwise, it will put you out of business, or it'll blow it with your partner, or with your friends and your colleague, your business associates, because no one wants to be in business with a jerk, you know, that thinks they're that thinks they're um, you know something special because they got a ten bucks in their pocket, you know, or maybe a little more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any uh, closing comments on this one? I've already had my closing comments. Well, thank you so much for that, Don. That was what were exactly what I didn't catch that. What were the? Closing? I was ending on my story with the cheeseburgers and French fries. Oh, that was your cheeseburger and French fry story. That was your closing comments. I said these are my closing comments. That's my last. It's story. not your best episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, should be, you should be one to talk. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Well, hopefully that gives you something to think about anyway. And uh, we'll wish you the best on... Uh, on not my best. On mo- it's, well, good. we'll talk about it after the podcast. Save it for after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll hopefully we'll, we'll wish the multiple windfalls for you and, uh, and lots of, lots of uh, uh, you know, big days and, and, uh, and business deals that you can have to <clears throat> have, actually have this problem of negotiating it uh, along the way. But just something to think about and prepare for before it happens. So thanks for watching. And if you think this was one of my best, you can comment in the um, box below. No one's going to say it was one of your best episodes, Don. Thanks for watching. You're talking about In-N-Out Burger. All right, we're out. This is just going from bad to worse. (laughs) Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. (laughs) Bye-bye.